Hey, what's up everyone? It's been a busy week in the greenhouse. I've been pricking out seedlings, potting plants on, and making space as more and more plants are arriving. Now, it's a rainy day here in the garden again. It's a British spring, what can I say? So today's challenge is potting on and propagating colocasia plants. Now, colocasias are sometimes known as elephant ears or by their food crop name. The underground corn is more commonly known as taro, which is sold in Asian food stores and it's a main staple food crop in tropical and subtropical regions. It's actually that corn that we're gonna to utilize today to propagate this colocasia plant. Now, some colocasias do produce overground runners that will root down and produce a clone of the parent plant and that's the plant's mechanism for colonizing an area. But that's just one of its mechanisms. Colocasias will also utilize this corn, which will produce offsets. So I'm gonna knock this out of the pot now and show you exactly what I'm talking about and how I propagate and divide my colocasia or elephant ear plant. Now, as colocasias are moisture loving plants, I've kept these relatively wet over the past few days just to try and encourage them to start shooting again. So I think that soil is gonna be a little bit sticky. So it's definitely I roll my sleeves up job. So let's just knock this out of the pot and see what we're dealing with. Yeah, there are loads of offsets here. We're gonna be able to produce a lot of free colocasia plants just by dividing these corn offsets. I was right about rolling my sleeves up as well. This pot is full of juicy worms that I'm just gonna scoop up, keep over there for now and I'm gonna use them to improve the soil in my garden. So with splitting colocasia, it's very, very simple. You can see the bottom kind of chunk of soil is already dropped away. Again, rich and full of worms, great for the compost heap or for the garden. And you're seeing the offsets here. Now I'm gonna just try and tease away the soil so that I can show you kind of more clearly what's happening here. As I'm doing it, the colocasia corms are already breaking away, so I'm not gonna do much more than this. Okay, so this section here is the main mother plant. This is where all of the leaf growing points were coming out from last season. You can see around the base of that main corm, which may or may not reshoot, there are dozens, probably 10 or 12 offsets. Now these offsets expand out from the side of that main corn. And more often than not, I'm gonna try and do this without making too much of a mess, you can just pull them apart. Now, if I just knock the soil off of this one, you'll see more clearly what we're dealing with. There you go. So that is our first Colocasia corn offset. Now, a corn, isn't a bulb. They look similar, but a corm is actually just an underground swollen part of the stem that's used to store starchy energy so that plants like this colocasia, and this cultivar is colocasia pink china, when they go dormant in winter, all of the energy stored in this starchy underground swollen stem will provide all of the food it needs to get those first leaves above ground when the weather permits. And then obviously the leaves and roots will produce all of the energy the plant needs from that point forward. So I'm gonna keep dividing these corms, the offsets off of the main pot, off of the main corm, sorry. And we will start to pot them on and have multiple colocasia plants for free. While we're doing this, Let's talk about how to best grow colocasias to get the most awesome foliage in your garden. They do flower, but we don't really grow them for that. They're insignificant. We grow them for the foliage as an ornamental plant or that root crop, that taro, if you're growing them as a food source. Now, colocasias, being tropical and subtropical plants, absolutely thrive in as much heat as possible. When it comes to light, I did an experiment last year. I grew one in partial shade and one in full sun. And the one I was growing was Colocasia esculenta, the standard straight species. And I've got to say, 
I often find when I grow big leafy plants in partial shade, those leaves actually get bigger because that plant is putting out larger leaves to try and increase the surface area so that it can catch as much of that available sunlight that's possible. But in this case, when growing Colocasia, I found full sun was so much better. And I think that figures really because those big leaves are able to grow that big because it's in full sun, it can photosynthesize more, which produces all of the energy and sugars that that Colocasia plant needs to grow really, really big. So with Colocasias, I found full sun is absolutely best. You'll also often find that Colocasias are sold as pond plants or marginal aquatic plants, and that's because they thrive with lots of humidity and lots of moisture. You can actually grow a lot of species in the shallower parts of your pond and those leaves will get enormous and the roots are uptaking all of the nitrates and things from the water that fish and wildlife is producing. Um, if you are growing them in pots, I'd always keep a tray on the bottom of the pot and keep that filled up with water because they will just lap that water up to get those really, really big leaves. And with plants with big leaves, one of the reasons that they're the first to wilt is because that big surface area is transpiring water all day long and that's going to dehydrate the plant so it needs to be able to uptake water to keep all of those processes happening. So you can see by separating all of these offsets, that's the small younger corms that were attached to the parent plant, we've reproduced this plant, we've propagated this colocasia really, really easily. Now, you can see here what I mean by offset. So they literally just pull off the side and this plant has done this itself to try and colonize an area. And as a gardener, we can utilize offsets of corms to propagate colocasia plants really, really easily. So from this one plant, I've managed to pull off one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, teeny tiny one, 10, 11, 12, another tiny one, 13, plus the parent plant. So from that one pot, we've got 14 plants. I almost forgot how to add one to 13 then. So the next task is potting them on. Now, let's store these there. With colocasias, they like really, really rich soil. But at this stage, I don't wanna kind of overfeed that soil because they haven't really got their roots established yet. So I'm just gonna use regular multi-purpose potting compost into one of these nine centimeter plastic pots. And as I always say, I like to use these top pots wherever I can because they've got really good long life, but they are in the UK curbside home recyclable which makes recycling them and being responsible much more easy for everyone. So all I'm going to do is fill a pot up most of the way, then sit my Colocasia corm into the soil. Now I'm not gonna bury it too deeply. I, it's gonna be deep enough so that the Colocasia corm can produce roots and kind of anchor itself into the soil. But I'd like that growth point to just poke out the top of the pot. So you can see here, I've pushed it in, the growth point is just poking out the top of the pot. Now I'm just gonna infill this area and firm in the soil around that corn to enable it to become established. Just like that. Now, I'm gonna give it a good watering and within two to three weeks at the moment, a bit quicker if I put them on bottom heat and under lights, this is gonna have roots poking out the bottom of the pot, fresh leaves emerging from the top and it will become established as an independent plant that will in turn, in time, reproduce itself the same way as the parent plant did that we've just used to propagate this colocasia. Now, colocasias are fantastic plants to grow in a tropical style garden or any garden, really. If you are lucky enough to live somewhere tropical or subtropical, you can try growing it as a food crop. 
That's the species Colocasia esculenta, which produces the food crop taro. Or if you just want to grow it as an ornamental plant, there are so many cultivars available now. Pink China for me is a firm favorite. It's got nice big green leaves, elephant ear leaves, and pink stems, and it's borderline hardy in the UK, which is fantastic. I also love Black Magic. Um, there's a really nice speckled one called Mojito. There are so many to choose from, and it's all about foliage with colocasias. So if you've got one, have a go at propagating your colocasia this way by splitting the corms, or if it's producing runners, just snip them off and set them into a pot, just like we've done with this corm offset and you'll be multiplying your colocasia plants in no time. Thank you so much for watching. Now, if you found this video helpful, please, please, please hit subscribe. It's the easiest way to support the channel. If you're in the UK, feel free to check out my plant and seed shop. And in due course, these colocasia plants will be making their way to that shop. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna keep going, potting on more and more. I've actually got a few more parent plants to divide to. I'm gonna be busy the rest of the afternoon. I'll see you in the next one.